Welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series that we do at Mayfield Renewables. And what we'd like to do is talk about different codes as they apply to solar and solar plus storage design and installations. And today we're gonna to talk about the National Electrical Code, the 2023 version specifically, as it relates to cable trays. So uh, section 690.31 in, in, um, in the NEC is what talks about it. We've had cable trays, we've had allowances for cable trays in code in 690 for a few cycles now. The big change here is that we have some clarification around how to size our conductors uh, and being able to utilize the earlier articles. So let's take a look at the language. And as you can see here, 6931C um, talks about you know PV wire and cable shall be listed. And then it goes on in, under C2, which is what I wanna really focus on in this, in this uh, video, is about cable tray. So that first charging statement under cable tray didn't change. You see a small change there at the end. It really honestly wasn't a change. They just matched the style in terms of how they showed those units. So that first part where it says that we can use small conductors, we can use PV wire, we can use DG cable of all sizes in cable tray. And so this was an important addition back in, I believe it was 2017 version where this got added. And it was a big deal because it was really the first time you could use small conductors in cable trays on rooftops. And so this was making it, putting it in code saying, hey, yep, you can do it. If you go look at article 392, it only talks about larger size conductors, one hot and larger. And so that's kind of the crux of what we're looking at with all of this yellow, all of these changes in here. So what we have here, all of the stuff that we have highlighted in yellow is actual code change uh, in the 2023 language. And so what this is saying is if you're using single conductor PV wire smaller than one aught, then you can use 392.80A2 as the way to um, look at the ampacities of your conductors. So again, the, this was interesting because when cable trays got added into code, it was, again, it was this ability to put in these small conductors, but that didn't give us any other uh, ways of installing. It didn't give us any other rules saying, here's how you calculate the ampacities, here's how you calculate how many conductors you put can put in the cable trays. And that's what these changes did. And so this is important because if you, again, went back and look at 392, it still only talks about one aught and larger. And so it was a difficult path. It was like, yes, 690 says we can do this, but then it doesn't give us any rules in 392. So this is allowing you to apply the code language and the code requirements for those sizes. And so if you go back and look at 392.80A2, it will basically give you some ampacity values based on how you're installing it and you know kind of what the specific um, methods are that you're installing it. You're gonna have different correction factors that you're gonna use, but that's what code is saying. And then the second part of this is talking about how to uh, size the cable trays. And so essentially what it comes down to is it allows us to uh, put the circuits together so you can zip tie or you can bundle those circuits together, uh, the positive and the negatives together. Uh, but you're gonna calculate the width of your cable tray. You're gonna look at the width of the outer diameter of your cables and basically make sure that it would, you're gonna size it so that the, the width of the cable tray is at, is at least the same width of the sum of those conductors. So really, you can imagine if you were just to lay every single conductor in a single layer, that's really what it's gonna come down to. And so again, better clarification, better help on how to size those cable trays. Uh, and I should note, I should say, um, good friend Dave Click is kind of the one who put this out there. So he gets all the credit all the time. So I'll just go ahead and continue to give him that credit. So Dave, if you're listening, uh, you know, we recognize that that was all you. So thanks for that. Um, and it was, you know, super helpful addition. So we can see some images here and just kind of what we're talking about. You know, we have cable tray, we have ladder tray here on the left. And so we have some ventilated tray over there on the right. And so we're putting these in again on the left there, it shows you kind of that single layer. They didn't even use the entire width of this uh, cable tray, but this is, you know, what you are allowed to do. So we're going to take those rules for the one aught 
cable and we're gonna apply it to our 12 gauge or our 10 gauge conductor, come up with those ampacity values, come up with the width of that cable tray and be able to apply those to our PV systems. All right, so that pretty much covers the 690.31 changes to cable tray, just going over, giving us those allowances, telling us what we can and can't do. If you'd like to get more information on this or other topics, we have solar and solar plus storage workshops available on our website. Those are all pre-recorded and available online. They are also available for NABSEP credits. So if you'd like to learn more about those, you know, visit our website at mayfield.energy and you can learn about uh, all those different courses. And then finally, if you have questions, comments about this or other videos, or if you have ideas on topics that you'd like to see, love to hear from you. Let us know what we can help you out with. And I appreciate you joining us at Code Corner and we'll talk to you next time.